Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We want you, Jesus. We want to know you more. We want to draw near to you, that you may draw near to us. Lord, you promise that if we would obey you, that you would manifest yourself to us. Lord, it's not just about words on a page, Lord, but they are alive and powerful. And your presence is upon your word and upon the truth. Amen. And you visit your people, Lord. And yes, we walk by faith and not by sight. But Lord, there are times and seasons that refreshing, renewal, revival, a returning to our first love. Lord, those times come, Lord. And we're just grateful for your presence, for the anointing of your spirit that we sense in this place today already. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you have forgiven us of our sins, that you died on that cross to pay the price for our sins, that because you were sinless and God Almighty in the flesh, you rose from the dead bodily. You returned to heaven, Lord, and, and in the very near future, Lord, you're going to return to this earth to set up your kingdom. And we worship you because you are the creator, the God of gods, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. The name of Jesus is above every name. Lord, we're grateful that you're not just a prophet, not just a teacher, but God Almighty in the flesh, our creator, the one true God. We exalt you today. We love you today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I sense him here today. You may be seated if you so choose. If you want to stand up, it's fine with me. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody in Fire Grace Church this morning. Um, goodness, we got a lot to cover this morning. Um, Let's go ahead and put up our first scripture this morning. I'm putting this up before the PowerPoint. We get into it. Um, I'm just going to give you a little introduction before we get into the message. But this this verse, I've I've preached many times. I've quoted many times. Uh, it's actually the the two verses here: First Timothy four one and two. Vitally important. Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul warning. That especially in the last days, to the last days, Christians, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Um. We are warned. We are warned by the Apostle Paul. We are warned by Peter, the Apostle Peter. We are warned by the Lord Jesus himself in Matthew 24 over and over and over. Take heed that no man deceive you. Do not let yourself be deceived. Now, what does the word deceived mean? It means to be led astray, away from truth, away from Jesus Christ and his word from sound doctrine from the Bible. I want to state that this morning you need to understand that, that as Christians we believe the Bible and we know there is a Satan, there is a devil. And first and foremost, he is a seducer. He is a deceiver. means he tries to get you to believe what is not true. He tries to misrepresent things. But remember this one thing as we get into this this morning. Satan, the fallen angels, the demon spirits, their entire mission until Jesus returns, their entire mission will be to try to lead Christians away from Jesus and try to stop People who don't know Jesus from coming to Jesus and being born again, being saved. That's his mission. And he will do anything, say anything, create any kind of, of massive deception to lead people astray. 
Now, sadly, the Bible tells us in the last days, here this verse says, some will depart from the faith. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that there will be a falling away in the last days. And that means an apostasy. And apostasy meanings, means leaving something you were loyal to. It's specifically saying you were once loyal to Jesus Christ, a true disciple, following him by his spirit, by his word, and that you departed from that. And I will say this very clearly, too. If you depart from the Scriptures, from believing the Word of God, the Bible, if you depart from that, you have departed from Jesus. I don't care how many times you say you follow Jesus. And if you don't pay attention to the Word of God and study it and read it and get it in you, I've said this many times, you will be deceived. The deception that's coming is going to make all other deceptions look like tiddlywinks. Like we're praying at patty cake. This deception that's coming is, I believe, the biggest one. There's really two big ones, but they go together. The big deception of the creation, the nature of the sun, moon, and the stars, and the shape of the earth. That deception... And this one. So let's go to the first slide this morning. Just entitled this, The Great End Time Delusion. Now I've talked about this for 36 years. Y'all understand? This is not a new topic for me. But new stuff keeps happening. In fact, this is going to be part one of two because there's no way I'll be able to finish this today. All right? In fact, I stayed up till 3 in the morning working on this and then got up and did some more work on it this morning. There is so much here, but I want to point out something to you and make sure you understand this. This organization called NASA is deception from the beginning. It's deception about what it does. It's deception, and it's part of this deception, this alien deception and as you're going to see over the next two weeks the vatican is involved in this deception with nasa but the vatican and this is something as a christian you should you have to get this down in you the roman catholic church has never been the true church of jesus christ never not from its beginning from 313 a.d when constantine saw the sign in the sky which was really an ankh wasn't a cross and when he decided to make the backslidden Roman church that was already falling away, when he decided to make them a political church and, and put his political people and his military officers, change their garments from military garb to religious garb, when he made it a state church, that's when it really began to go downhill. But it's never been the true church. It claims to be, but it never has been. Now, we could, we could deal with that history at some point. But they are, they are neck deep in this alien deception, and they're going to be a big part of it. NASA and the Vatican, they're already pushing this, and they're going to be the ones to come out and say, yes, we've made contact with extraterrestrials. They are here, and they're going to help us. They've come in peace. Just wait and see. It's going to be the greatest deception in the history of mankind. And people are going to, they're going to flock to it. Now let's start running through some of this. They've been setting this up for it for years, hadn't they? Yes, decades, many decades. Um, I actually sat up one night last week for hours just watching one ancient alien show after another. I thought, wow, they've been, you know, I don't watch TV, rarely ever. And then I thought, wow, uh, I may show some clips next week. But look, they've been setting us up. Have they not? And I want to tell you right now, there are people, there are even Christians who are more excited about this than they are about Jesus. They're going to be, yeah, I knew it. Do you know right now, 
in England, or in UK, rather, and this, this stat is old, but over half of the people in the UK, more than half believe in aliens, more than believe in God. Now, I want to make it clear to you as we get started in this. I do not believe that aliens are some extraterrestrial life from another planet because that doesn't exist. Other planets don't exist. We'll cover that too. But the bottom line is there are angels and there are fallen angels. And there are demon spirits. And there are offspring from human interaction with these things, human women and these fallen angels called Nephilim or the giants. But now we have, I believe, they've created the greys and some of these others. They're calling aliens. And they're going to walk out among us. And, and let me say this too at the outset of this. The people pushing this are not fringe weirdos, conspiracy theorists. We're talking about government officials, generals in our military. We're talking about academics, scientists are pushing this as truth, this, this alien agenda. And we just had the hearings talking about we, we have, we have non-human beings that have crashed. You know, I, I find it funny that they're supposed to have such superior technology. They can, they can travel hundreds of millions of light years, and they get here and crash. <laughs> I, that, that, to me, sounds weird, right? I don't think they should be crashing, but they somehow crash, and then we get all this stuff, right? But there it is. They've been setting us up. Now, let's look at this verse, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 8 through 12. The reason I've called this the great delusion because this will be part of the antichrist deception part of the beast kingdom deception part of the united nations one world government this is going to be the catalyst really for people to accept the agenda the environmental uh, agenda of the un the disarmament agenda of the un this is going to be the catalyst. And they're already, again, they've set it up for decades, and they're pushing it hard. But let's read this. This is first talking about the Antichrist. He says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, that is a direct reference to the Antichrist in the book of Revelation. When Jesus comes in Revelation 19, he clearly says that the sword of light comes forth from Jesus as he returns on his white horse and kills the Antichrist and the false prophet with him, and those two are put in hell. They are real men that are going to die and be put in hell. Okay? So that's who he's talking about, and he said, even him who's coming, he's saying when the Antichrist comes, his coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying or deceptive wonders. Now, what are wonders? Things that make you just stand in awe or amazement. And really, to tell you the truth, the devil hadn't really done anything that's really put anybody in awe yet, but he's about to. And this UFO alien manifestation, and listen, I'm going to tell you, it's real. What's manifesting in the skies is real. It's just, what is it? Well, as Christians, we know what it is. And I'm going to show you again. But he says, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and sign and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So he's saying, who's going to be deceived by this? Are those who do not love the truth. And what is the truth? The truth is God's word, the Bible. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen, so if you don't adhere and love the truth, I mean, it doesn't mean just, just know about the truth. It means you've got to love the truth of God's word. you got to love Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died on that cross and rose from there. You've got to love him with all your heart. Or you will be deceived. And he says, and for this cause, and this is what you do not want to get to this place. 
He says, for this cause, because people didn't love the truth that they might be saved, for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now what that means is, is that God is actually, when this deception comes forth, is going to step back and let it happen. He could stop it all. He could cut Satan off, stop the UFO, UAP manifestations, stop the aliens, stop the greys, stop the Nephilim, stop the underground giants and all. He could stop it all. Just like that. But he's going to let it happen. Because it's going to be a last filtering out. We'll find out who... Who's the wheat and who's the tares when this goes down for sure? And see, the Lord's all about allowing things to happen so that you will choose. Remember, he he allowed. He's the one to put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. So you would have a choice. And you're going to have a choice. You're going to follow Jesus and this holy Bible his word from Genesis to Revelation, or you're going to follow Satan and the deceiving, seducing spirits in this thing. And you're going to have to make up your mind. And if you choose to be deceived and follow Satan's agenda in this whole thing, because of the lying signs and wonders you're going to see in the skies, if you choose it, you will be damned for all eternity. You will go to hell, and hell is eternal punishment. It's eternal separation from God. This is a serious matter. This is why I talk about these things. Let's keep going here. Here's another verse. A passage, I should say. Luke 21, 10, and 11. And, of course, this is in Jesus' answer to when the, the apostles asked him, what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age or the end of the world? Our present system, our present time period. Then he said unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places and famines and pestilences and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Fearful sights. Do you know that this is one word? I'm going to show you what this word. Fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. This is one word right here. It's called phobotron. Sounds like a Decepticon. (laughs) Phobotron. You know how many times that this word is used in the Bible? Once. Which means it's unique and special to the scriptures. And what this means is to be, what? Something that strikes terror in you. A very frightening thing. Here's the root word, which is phobeo. It means to put to flight by terrifying, to put to flight, to flee, to be struck with fear, to be seized with alarm, to be startled by strange sights or occurrences. Do you see that? Oh, there's strange sights and occurrences happening in the skies, people, and it's going to get worse. All the young people today that have, that, have been, that, have, that have been just grown up on media, movies and TV and videos, they're going to worship these things like they're gods. They will. Mark it down. He says to be struck with amazement. But it also means, and this is what some is going to do, they're going to reverence and worship this thing. Oh, yeah, they're going to worship this. They're going to love the aliens. They're going to think they're here to help us. There it is, Phobeo. But Phobotron, to be struck with fear, there's your Thayers. But Phobotron, one word. Now, This phenomena that's all over the place. I mean, our government's admitted to it. The Canadian government admitted to it. The UK government officials. In fact, uh, the former Canadian defense minister, Paul Hellyer. I was actually, I'm actually was on an email thread with him. He is a full-blown 
believer that these are real aliens from other planets and that there's four kinds of them. He said this. I have the email. I may, I'll show it next week. But I have the email from like 2017 because a guy in Canada, friends with him, sent him my video that I did about the alien deception in 2017. And he tried to say, no, some of these uh, alien species worship our same creator and they're good. And I believe he's encountered them. I believe he's met them. The way he talks, he's met them. And most of, I think most of our world leaders have probably met them, encountered them, and that's why they believe in them. Some of them know what they are, and some of them I've been deceived into thinking that they're extraterrestrials from other galaxies and planets. But here's, let's look at the Bible, this whole phenomenon of these UFOs, UAPs as they call them now. This is Zechariah 5, 1 and 2, and he says here, Then I turned and lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a flying roll. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I answered, I see a flying roll. And the length thereof is 20 cubits, and the breadth thereof is 10 cubits. So he said, I see this flying roll. Now, of course, in Hebrew, the word roll means scroll. So it's like an ancient scroll. So basically, I see like flying cylinders. Now, this prophecy is from Zechariah. You know, we're talking about 2,500 years ago plus. And this is what he says about this, this flying scroll, this flying cylinders that you're going to see in the sky because it's flying in the air. He said, he said it to me, this is the curse. Somebody say the curse. The curse. This is the curse. That goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. Meaning it's going to be seen everywhere. Is that happening? Yeah, we'll see in a second. He said, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. So to believe in this stuff, to accept this alien deception, to think that these are not demons and fallen angels and to believe that there's some type of other part of God's creation or... You know, just because they're, you know, the, the false belief and all oh, there's these millions and millions of planets and galaxies out there and there just has to be life out there. See, that's where the basis of this comes from. It's just nonsense. They're not from far, far away. They've been here with us the whole time. But he said, this is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth for everyone that stealeth shall be cut off on this side according to it. Everyone that sweareth shall be cut off on that side, according to it, and I will bring it forth, says the Lord. Now, see, here's where we go again, where the Lord said, I will allow this strong delusion. Do you see the connection there? The Lord said, I will do this. He's going he's gonna to allow it to come forth. Just like when he, was, he wanted to get rid of Ahab, and he said, Who, who's going who's gonna to go for me and, and seduce or deceive Ahab to go to Ramoth Gilead? And it said a lying spirit stepped forward and said, I'll go do it. And the Lord said, how are you going to do it? He said, I'll go be a lying spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. And the Lord said, go. Mm -hmm. See, what happens is you don't want the Lord stepping back and letting you be turned over to seducing spirits. But the Lord said he's going to do it. He's going to allow it. And, sh and he noticed what it says. And it shall enter into the house of the thief. So not only will this stuff be in the skies, but it's going to go in their houses. And I'm going to get into this in part two about alien abductions and stuff appearing in people's houses. But he said, this is going to go into the house of the thief, into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of the house and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. See, this stuff right here, this demonic stuff, once people let it take them over, it will choose their, the, the day of their death. And notice it says when it's talking about people who swear, people who steal, people who swear by God's name falsely, what he's saying is the unsaved and the, the backslider that's living in sin, living wickedly, living in disobedience, and accept this deception, it's going to come into their home. And it will eventually be the downfall of their household. You hear me? 
Now let's keep going here. Let's see if there's been these flying scrolls in the sky. This is one of the earliest pictures. I think that one of the first pictures ever of a UFO. And what does that look like? Does that look like a flying scroll to you? Think about that. Where was that picture? Mount Washington, New Hampshire, 1870. Goodness. I mean, when did cameras come out? I mean, I know it was in the 1800s. But just look at that. Let me get some more. But remember, the Lord said that this would be a curse that would be all over the earth, right? So let's go. There's, there's Mount Washington, New Hampshire. Let's go on. Let's see here. Redbud, Illinois, April 23, 1950. 1960s, Taipei, China, India near New Delhi, 1964, Kazakhstan, Russia, 1995, Puerto Rico, 1988, jet chasing one, we just had that happen again the other day, I can't remember where this one was, Southwest News. Flying scrolls. Now, here's, uh, uh, this is from April 7, 2015. Let's just let you know, NASA's in on this. And I'll show you next week. We're going we're gonna to get into details from some NASA people that admit that they're working with these demonic entities. But here's what, we'll find alien life in 10 to 20 years. Now, I want you to see something. That's 2015, 10 years, 2025. I think we're nearing it. They're going to try to make themselves look like prophets for telling something. Folks, let me just go and tell you, NASA and this alien deception is a religion. It's just a demonic religion with a new robe. It says, are we alone in the universe? Top NASA scientists say the answer is most certainly no. So does that sound like some kind of fringe conspiracy theorist group, right? No, no, the libtards would love this. This is, this is NASA. This is the church of NASA here. They're priests in the white robes and the funny suits that, so they can go underwater. That was Los Angeles Times. Here we go. Uh, NASA astronauts say aliens are watching Earth. Astronauts. Now, don't we, everybody in the world, they just look up to astronauts. Like, they're, so, they're scientists, and they're the, you know, they're the best of the best of the best, sir. <laughs> and yet, the, the, now, if this was top secret, if this was uh, classified, do you think these guys could say this kind of thing? No, they're saying this kind of thing because that's what NASA wants them to say. Amen. Or they wouldn't be saying it. And here, let's just read a little bit. This is from 2017. It uh, says, given the odds, it seems unlikely that we are alone in the universe, but despite the protestations of believers, there is no indisputable evidence held in the public domain. However, there are numerous NASA-trained astronauts who who not only believe aliens exist, but argue that extraterrestrials are watching Earth. So, there you have it, right? We could go on into this article. Uh, Gordon Cooper, he's a former Project Mercury astronaut, served in the U.S. Air Force, says he saw numerous UFOs. 1985, he told a panel at the United Nations, I believe that these extraterrestrial vehicles and their crews are visiting this planet from other planets which are a little more technically advanced than we are on Earth. Of course, yet they still come here and crash. <laughs> Slayton Cooper's views were shared by Edgar Mich Mitchell, who walked on the moon nine hours as part of the 1971 Apollo 14 mission. 1996, Mitchell gave his version of the inf infamous Roswell incident on NBC. Now, let me just say this. These people, these people 
are preaching this message. And this is 2017. Do you think they're doing this just to waste their time or that because they're trying to indoctrinate or influence people? I think they're trying to influence people. But see, do you notice, too, how this whole deception of creation, the lies that NASA has made up about creation and now, it's two lies they tell us, the Big Bang and planets and galaxies far, far away and all this nonsense that, that the Bible doesn't teach and nor can any of them prove. They see lights in the sky through a telescope just like me and you can, and they make up crap. But they've made up this entire mythology and people believe it but the same mythology they've made up about creation they've made up about extraterrestrials and they actually have to have both lies to make it work well let's keep going ah here's the sun Houston, we have an admission. Meet the NASA astronauts who believe aliens are visiting Earth and communicating with humanity. Find out about the UFO sightings and extraterrestrial experiences of the world's most famous space explorers. Y'all see that? You might think that the only people who believe in aliens are forum-dwelling internet conspiracy theorists. But it turns out a lot of NASA astronauts also think extraterrestrials are real and that they have been in touch with humanity for a long time. What are they trying to do? They're trying to give credibility and context of what they want you to believe about this supernatural phenomena that's happening. They're deceivers. Here we have another one. Those UFO videos are real, the Navy says, but please stop saying UFO. No, what do we say what we want? Let's keep going. We'll get through this. The, the U.S. Navy just confirmed these UFO videos are the real deal. That's CNN politics. What, what, wait a minute. what was the date on that? September 18, 2019. Uh, this is the Hill. Congress implies UFOs have non-human origins. This is August 22nd, 2022. Uh, he goes on to say, it says, in Congress where legislation is drafted, debated, enacted, clear and concise definitions of paramount importance of military, as military air crews increasingly encounter unidentified flying objects, UFOs, lawmakers recently made several striking revisions to the definition of UFO, key among them, the explosive implication that some UFOs have non-human origins. Uh, as first reported by researcher, researcher Douglas Johnson, a draft bill approved unanimously by the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence rebrands UFOs as unidentified aerospace undersea phenomena, expanding the definition to include objects in space and under the oceans significantly broadens the scope of the muscular new office tasked by Congress with investigating UFOs. So now it's Congress. Hmm. I wonder how many of them are in on the, the, the gag. And you can keep reading this. I want to move on. It's a good, good article. You can go back and read it yourself. I just want to show you I went through the whole thing. All right. Now here's a video. Y'all got ready for that? Um, just a quick 60 minutes clip about the Navy videos. Just want you to see it real quick. See, there are a lot of people that are out there that are like in denial. They're like, oh, this, this is just in people's minds. This is not happening. Oh, no, it's happening. It's real. There are real things flying in the sky and appearing. There are real creatures going into people's houses and paralyzing them and Sometimes removing them from their homes and putting them back. Oh, yes. It's happening. We do not deny that. But it's satanic. It's demonic. Let's play this. Bill Whitaker on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, UAP, more commonly known as UFOs. The Pentagon says this night vision video was taken by Navy personnel and is being investigated. 
unusual sightings like this one continue to occur and be captured on video. Last August, the Pentagon set up the UAP Task Force to collect and analyze evidence gathered by service members who are now being encouraged to report these strange encounters. We met two former Navy pilots, Lieutenant Commander Alex Dietrich and Commander Dave Fravor. In 2004, they witnessed something shocking, inexplicable, and seemingly out of this world. Did the thought of UFO enter your minds? It was unidentified, and that's why it was so unsettling to us, because we weren't expecting it, because we couldn't classify it. But what I want to be really careful of here is that we um, don't jump to conclusions, right? That we don't sensationalize this or... Little green men? Uh, yeah, little green, little men, green men or extraterrestrial. You're seeing something that defies explanation. Right. Very much. Yes. It was November 2004, and the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group was training about 100 miles southwest of San Diego. The advanced new radar on a nearby ship, the USS Princeton, had detected what operators called multiple anomalous aerial vehicles over the horizon, descending 80,000 feet in less than a second. Fravor and Dietrich, each with a weapons system officer in the back seat, were ordered to investigate and found an area of white water in an otherwise calm blue sea. It appeared to them that an object about the size of a 737 was just under the water. So as we're looking at this, her backseater says, hey, Skipper, do you? And about that got out. I said, dude, do you, do you see that thing down there? And we saw this little white tic-tac looking object and it's just kind of moving above the whitewater area do you ever drop your phone and it sort of bounces off the mm -hmm. countertop and then bounces off something else and it's sort of like no no predictable movement no predictable trajectory yeah I guess. it was just it was just like a ping pong ball no just acceleration very very random acceleration as dietrich circled above fravor went in for a closer look so you're sort of spiraling down? Yep. The Tic Tac still pointing north south. He goes, and just turns abruptly and starts mirroring me. So as I'm coming down, it starts coming up. So it's it's mimicking your moves. Yeah, it was aware we were there. I want to see how close I can get. So I go like this, and it's climbing still. And when it gets right in front of me, it just disappears. Disappears? Disappears. Like gone. And you saw no visible propulsion, right. no, no wings or anything to no. make it fly in our atmosphere? No, actually when it turned and started coming up, it was kind of like, okay, because <laughs> we have nothing that goes that fast and just starts climbing at will. Seconds later, the Princeton reacquired the target 60 miles away. So in a matter like, of- Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just appeared there. Mm -hmm. in, in seconds, yeah. it was 60 miles away. Mm -hmm. Later, another flight crew encountered what they believed to be the same object and briefly locked onto it with a targeting camera before it zipped off again. They didn't get a visual on it, but they did get this flare footage, yeah. the forward-looking infrared. So you've got the infrared image right. yes. and your eyesight yes. and the Princeton the radar. all saying there is something out there. Yes. The Princeton had been tracking the anomalous objects for days, Dietrich says they were unarmed. You know, I felt the, the vulnerability of not having anything to defend ourselves, to not having any rounds, anything on the rails. If this was, in fact, a hostile threat um, and we were engaged, I, I felt vulnerable. And then I felt confused when it disappeared. Dietrich says she briefed superiors about what they all saw. In no time, the story of their encounter spread quickly. Rumors like that spread within seconds. I would say with less than 30 minutes, the entire ship knew this happened. And what was the reception like? I actually thought it was kind of funny and started yeah. giving us a lot of grief. Ridicule. Yeah. Ridicule. Yeah. Yeah. They, they made cartoons, and Nothing. on the ship's TV, they played Men in Black and Independence Day and Signs. Signs. And so they, they, they made fun of it. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Did anybody take it seriously? Yeah, I believe the Admiral staff made a few phone calls, but that was the extent of it. The story will continue after this. So, you see... Christopher Miller...
we, we're gonna we're gonna stop it there. You see, they're making it they're making it to be serious. They're not playing like it's a game. So they're bringing out Navy pilots and stuff like that. Uh, and there you go, you know, for presidents Clinton and George W. Bush. <laughs> there was the guy who was on staff. Yeah, I bet you were. Um, of course, Navy confirms multiple UFO videos are real. Tucker covered it. Uh, here's some more, you know, incredible people coming out and going, yeah. It says, uh, former Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist and Trump knows about it. That was NBC News. Uh, yeah, it says, uh, a former Israeli space security chief has sent eyebrows shooting heavenward by saying that earthlings have been in contact with extraterrestrials from a galactic federation. The unidentified flying objects have asked not to publish that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. Haim Eshed, the former head of Israel's defense ministry, space director, told Israel's whatever newspaper. Uh, but you see, and, and I'm going to tell you, I believe these are very coordinated media events, if you get what I'm saying. They're trying to give credibility to this. Now, why would you try to give credibility to something or put a face on something of what it's not? Because they know that there is a big movement out here within Christianity to say, no, this is not extraterrestrials. This is not beings from other galaxies or planets. These are fallen angels and demons trying to deceive mankind. So this is why they are pushing this agenda so hard, all right? And really, they've actually started to, I believe they've started to convince a lot of Christians, a lot of Christians who don't really believe their Bibles anymore. Going to church for them is more of a social thing. They don't really believe the Bible. They don't really believe the spiritual side of things. They don't, they don't really like to talk about angels or demons or the spirit realm or what, you know. They think all of that's just... Oh, that's just myths and fairy tales written by men. You know, I just go to church so I can pass out my business card. But I'm a Christian. Yeah, okay. Here's uh, Paul Hellyer, the guy I told you I was, have emails. Cabal keeping UFO secrets to blame for the world's woes, says former cabinet minister Paul Hellyer. Uh, notice he says, global warming, just one challenge that could be faced with extraterrestrial technology. Former liberal defense minister tells Toronto crowd on Saturday. Isn't it amazing that the, the aliens seem to be pushing the same demonic false agenda that the UN's pushing and the World Economic Forum? Hmm. Uh, Britain's secret X-Files dossier containing details of 50 years of UFO sightings across the country has finally been released. And that was in 2017. Uh, let's see here. We're just going to real, real life UFO X-Files released to the public by the government. Of course, this is our most recent thing. Whistleblower tells Congress U.S. is concealing multi-decade program that captures UFOs. Now, Again, they can travel hundreds of millions of light years, but we can capture them. <laughs> even though our technology could be thousands of years, even millions of years behind their technology. But we can capture them. Or cause them to crash. That's one of the claims about the Roswell, that we caused them to crash. <laughs> yeah. This is all nonsense. And this talks about the whole thing. Again, they... You know, you guys can look it up. This is AP, so Associated Press. Um, here's the Guardian UFO hearings. Whistleblower David Grush, I don't know how you say his name, says Grush says non-human biologics found at alleged crash sites as it happened. Um, but really, I mean, do you think actually think Congress, if if Congress believed this was nonsense, do you actually believe they'd have hearings about this? No. They're try they're they're pushing an agenda. Let's keep going. There could be here's here's 2019. <laughs> I just love this. There could be up to 10 billion warm and cozy Earth-like planets in our home galaxy. New research reveals. Really? You need to go back. Some of you ought to go back 
to the series I did, The Sevenfold Doctrine of Creation, and go to the one called Deceived by the Stars. Deceived by the Stars. Because you'll find out that with their best telescopes, all they see is little dots of light, blips of light, just like we see when we look up in the sky. And they create, they have artists to come in and create all of this nonsense. All, this, all those, those pretty colored pictures they say is from Hubble and from Webb satellites. That's all photoshopped and artist renditions. And I have the videos of NASA artists telling you that exactly how they do it. They don't hide this. Folks, all of your stuff about other planets and galaxies far, far away, all of that is myth. All of that is part of a religion to get you away from Jesus Christ in the Bible. That's all, it is a, it's a big show. Remember it said they would be deceiving spirits and seducing spirits and doctrines of devils would be what? Speaking lies and hypocrisy. The word hypocrisy means to pretend to be something you are not. I know one of the funniest memes I've got is some aliens, some of the great aliens say, why you call us demons? That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> call you demons because you are demons. Somebody say Amen. Now, this guy, oh, this guy, Dr. Stephen Greer. Now, every time there's a new UFO disclosure, Greer is everywhere. Now, I have a friend that I grew up with that is personal friends with Dr. Stephen Greer and used to go out into the desert with him and do their Buddhist rituals and their meditations and chants to call up and make a UFO appear in the sky. He's actually got a set of, Dr. Greer has a set of meditation and Buddhist techniques that he uses to conjure up UFOs. All right? Now, Dr. Greer is one of the biggest deceivers of them all, but he's everywhere. But he's the UFO researcher, says new documentary exposes what the secret agenda has been. Now, what's amazing is he's out there like, I'm exposing the secret agenda of the government. No, you are part of it. You're that controlled opposition, tries to look like you're against, and you're going to give us some big, bad new information that the government ha isn't already. Look, the government already been spewing this stuff out there for us. This is feeding it to us. Our government is controlled by Satanists, Luciferians. The government of the UK is controlled by the same Luciferians, Satanists. All the governments are controlled. The kings of the earth are against the Lord, God Almighty, and his anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's what Psalm 2 told us 3,000 years ago. Um, but this guy. E.T. contact, disclosure, uh, blah, 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 blah. Here's what's bothering me. All right, how many of you know about the, the show Redacted? Right? Oh, yeah. They seem like they're on our side exposing things. No, 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 no. Had him on for over an hour or around an hour and just let him spew his stuff. And they were just all into it. This guy right here. Don't let these people fool you. There's a lot of people that will expose certain things and make you think that they're on our side. And then when it comes to the real stuff, they start promoting the lies and the agenda of deception. Yeah, I saw this guy on that Sean Ryan show. How many know about Sean Ryan show? Oh, they had Greer on. Yeah, there's Greer's website. I'm going to show you what Greer said right here. The Hidden Truth, Forbidden Knowledge, Meditations. He's got a book, but here's the CD. But he says here, Two Guided Meditations from Hidden Truth, Forbidden Knowledge, Structure of the Universe, and a Guided Meditation for Contacting Extraterrestrial Beings. The Cosmic Consciousness CD and the Hidden Truth CD in combination make an excellent dynamic contact course. So they're going to teach you how to do Satanic, Buddhist, Hindu meditation 
techniques so you can get in touch with aliens. Let me tell you what that gets you in touch with when you do that. I wrote a whole book about it, The Polluted Church from Rome to Kansas City. You know what that gets you into? Demons. That gets you into contact. Isn't it interesting that the same techniques that, get, that have for years gotten Satanists and witches in contact with demon spirits now can get you in contact with alien extraterrestrials? Yeah, it's amazing. This little description here, which we'll make it a little bigger. Cosmic Consciousness, a course in advanced mantra meditation. Dr. Stephen Greer shares the complete understanding of how to attain higher states of awareness through meditation in this MP3 download. It is the culmination of 35 years of experience as a meditator and teacher of meditation and brings forth a completely new understanding of the ancient Vedic knowledge of mantras, their unique tonality, and how to properly use the mantra. Now, I've taught y'all before when I did the message several years ago on transcendental meditation. A mantra is the name of a god, a demon god, one of the Hindu gods, that you repeat over and over and over again. You're calling upon a demon god. Now, what do you think he's going to get doing the same kind of meditation and calling on using mantras and calling on using the Buddhist bowls and trying to get the tones, you doing all that stuff? What do you think's coming? Now, to him, they're not demons. They're extraterrestrials. They're space brothers. Exactly. They call them space brothers. There is no space, y'all. Oh, yeah. There is no such thing as outer space. We'll deal more with that. No, no such thing. And if any of you say there is, I'm going to say, have you been there? <laughs> no, you have not been there. You have not seen it. So if you say there is, here's what you're believing. You're believing what other men told you or what other men wrote in books, and you're believing that by faith because you haven't seen it yourself. So what you have is religion. Mm -hmm. No, there is. The Bible teaches... That there is our atmosphere created by a molten glass dome called the firmament. And above that firmament is God's throne. The third heaven where Paul went. That's going to be rolled back at the second coming of Jesus Christ. And Jesus is going to descend from there. There is no outer space or nothingness or empty, endless ever-expanding vacuum of space above our atmosphere. It does not exist. They didn't go to the moon. They're in a rover on Mars. That rover's on Devon Island in Canada. And we found that. They put pictures on the NASA website. I have it in my book. NASA website, they got pictures of the rover, rover picture on Mars, and there's a little dead prairie dog over here. So I guess there's prairie dogs on Mars. Space prairie dogs. They, they, they need a little bubble helmet like, like uh, what's her name? What was the one in, in SpongeBob, the squirrel that lived under there? with Sandy. 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 Little, little prairie dogs. NASA's been busted so many times, y'all. They have been busted. I mean, there's so many smoking guns to prove they lie about everything. Oh, they do have rockets, and they do go up into the ether, and they do deploy balloon satellites, and they do reconnaissance operations, but they are not a space program. They're not going to Mars. Mars is just a star, y'all. It's just a light in the sky. They didn't, they're not going to It's not a terrestrial Plant, plant, they don't exist. The Bible talks about God made the sun and the moon and the stars. Where does it say he made other earth-like planets? He didn't. And again, they lie to you all the time. This is why they cannot be trusted. The fact we know what they're pushing about, about creation, that first of all, do you understand how silly the Big Bang is? That nothing, nothing exploded and somehow had all of this matter that they say is in the universe. And people believe that. And if you believe that, 
You have a religion. These are the same people that say we came from monkeys. And yet, there are no thousands and thousands of fossil bones of the, of the transition of the missing links. And why aren't monkeys still evolving into human beings? No, you've been lied to. You've been lied to about everything. And you know, the more I study, the older I get, the more I find out the Bible is true and men are liars. Somebody say amen. amen. You, you can go to Dr. Greer's website and read all of this. Y'all all right with this? Chad, let me borrow some of his slides. Save me a little time here. John Allen Hynek posited that UFOs come from somewhere else via the astral plane. That is mysticism, y'all. That is spirituality. That is the dark side. That is occultism. He's telling you they come from the spirit realm. Right? Let's keep going. We got quote after quote here. Now, this is, I, I, uh, this is straight from my book, Like Clay. And the first two chapters, I deal with this and where this deception, this UFO, because we go back, we go back, really you go back, we're going to cover it next week, 1970, you go back to Fatima and the, what happened there in Fatima, Portugal, or Spain, or wherever they were, with those Catholic girls saying they saw Mary. It wasn't Mary. It's silver disc. But this was the real society, okay? And this is what all the Nazis came out of. The SS and the Nazi party came out of this society. And what the, the real society was... It was formed in 1917, four men, two women, and the women were mediums. They were witches. They were in contact with demons, and they channeled demon spirits. They admit this. Uh, the men, some of the men, I think, were, uh, they were uh, Freemasons as well in the Knights Templar. Uh, one of them, this Maria Orsic, is a medium. And so here, here's the deal. Um, it says right here, they spoke of making contact with ancient Germanic and Babylonian deities like Ishtar, Astarte, and or Osiris, and of communicating with distant worlds in outer space. The originating members of the real society included cultist Carl Hoshofer, ha Baron Rudolph, uh, I'm not even going to try, World War I ace pilot. So it was this little group, they started this little, this little occult group, and again, Here's what it says. It says, in December 1919, members of the Thule Society, the Real Society, and other cultists rented a small lodge in Germany. Maria Orsic and another medium who is only known as Sigrun, or whatever you say, joined them. Maria claimed to have received telepathic medium trans transmissions, what New Agers today would call channeling, in a language unknown to her containing technical information for building a flying machine that could reach distant galaxies, space travel. And uh, real documents mention that these telepathic messages originated in Aldebaran, a solar system 68 light years away in the constellation Taurus. Uh, by 1943, Orsic claimed that subsequent messages from the aliens in Aldebaran revealed that there were two habitable planets orbiting that star and that the ancient Sumerians were linked to the aliens there. So here you have this whole outer space thing really before it ever even got big. Where is it originating from? Who are the people pushing it forth? People deep into demonic, satanic, occult practices. And who came out of that? The Nazi heads of the Nazi party were in the real society. That was their quest. They wanted to find the power of real. They believed existed among a people who lived under the earth. And they, could, and they were taught that human sacrifice, particularly children and the most innocent, was the way to gain that power until they could actually join those people. Your SS officers were highly spiritual and into all this. Who was one of the SS officers who was most well-known? Werner von Braun. Operation Paperclip brought 1,600 Nazi scientists, rocket scientists, MK Ultra specialists. They all came to the United States. I love this. The Nazis didn't lose. They moved to America. 
They did. We gave some of them we gave different names, identities. Oh yeah. Here's Warner von Braun said in 1959. We find ourselves faced by powers which are far stronger than hitherto assumed, whose base is at a present unknown to us. I cannot say at present we are now engaged in entering closer contact with those powers, and within six or nine months it may be possible to speak with more precision on the matter. Dr. Hermann Oberth, who pioneered rocket design for the German Reich during World War II and later advanced rocket technology for the American manned space launches, cryptically stated, we cannot take credit for our record advancement in certain scientific fields alone. We have been helped. When asked by whom, he replied, the people of other worlds. These are your people who came up with space and space travel and other galaxies. Nazis. Now, this is, uh, this is interesting here. This is uh, a book I have. It's actually in my bag over here. If you want a good book with a lot of good information in it, I can't remember when this came out. It was either the late 90s or the early 2000s, somewhere in that time period. Um, UFOs, Friend, Foe, or Fantasy, A Biblical Perspective on the Phenomenon of the Century by William R. Getz. Um, but this, in this book, it says here, Lynn E. Coteau was the senior bibliographer for the 1969 U.S. Air Force Office of Scientific Research publication, uh, UFOs and Related Subjects, an annotated bibliography. This 400-page volume listed over 1,600 books and articles. Coteau required, uh, actually, was that four years to read the books and thousands of pieces of literature. Anyway, in her preface, she makes this observation. She says, now, this is in going through reading 1,600 like books, articles. This was her conclusion to the United States Air Force. A large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with mysticism and the metaphysical. It deals with subjects like mental telepathy, automatic writing, and invisible entities, as well as phenomena like poltergeist, ghost manifestations, and possession. Many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press uh, recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomena. You see that? So this was a quote in this book. Then I decided to find the actual document, and I did. There it is. 1969, the Air Force Office of Scientific Research. And there, there's the actual quote I just read to you. Oh, guess what, y'all? I found a whole new trove of government documents, declassified government documents that talk about flat earth. I'll bring those up later. Here we go, Operation Trojan, Trojan Horse by Mr. John Keel. Uh, this part, of course, I found this. This quote's in that book I just talked about, UFOs, friend, foe, or fantasy. Um, but it, he's, he, he says it in many places, but this is his book here. But John Keel is acknowledged as one of the world's best informed researchers of the UFO phenomenon. He is the author of a number of books, including The Mothman Prophecies, The Eighth Tower. Teal, who is an agnostic, makes this statement in his classic volume, UFOs, Operation Trojan Horse. The UFO manifestations seem to be, by and large, merely minor variations of the age-old demological phenomena. So he said... It looks the same as every report we've ever had demons. He even, he even said it here. That's him. He said, demonology is not just another crackpotology. He said, it is the ancient and scholarly study of monsters and demons who have seemingly coexisted with men throughout human history. Thousands of books have been written on the subject, many of them authored by educated clergymen, scientists, and scholars and uncounted numbers of well-documented demonic events are readily available to every researcher. Notice what he says here at the end. The manifestations and occurrences described in this imposing literature are similar, if not entirely identical, to the UFO phenomena itself. This is a person who is not a Christian. Uh, here's another one. Thank you from Chad. Riley gave me this one, but this is a great one from his... Same book. The devil and his demons can, according to the literature, manifest themselves in almost any form and can physically imitate anything from angels to horrifying monsters with glowing eyes. 
Strange objects and entities materialize and dematerialize in these stories just as UFOs and their splendid occupants appear and disappear, walk through walls, and perform other supernatural feats. Again, not a Christian, but telling you. Here's a Pierre Gurin, UFO researcher, scientist associated with the French National Council for Scientific Research. He's dead now. He, I think he died in 2018, but he says, the modern UFO knots and the demons of the past days are probably identical. I, want you to just, I wanted you to see it's not just me saying this. Says uh, Stuart Goldman, a Los Angeles-based journalist who inter has investigated UFOs as a skeptic, including interviews with Whitley Strieber, uh, author of the mega bestsellers about UFO abductions. Goldman quotes Elaine Morganelli, one of the guests at Strieber's meeting, whose simple yet chilling conclusion is that Strieber is being contacted not by friendly visitors, but by demons. Uh, he comments, one could write... Uh, Morganelli off as some sort of Christian fanatic. However, she's not the only one who's come to the conclusion uh, that's supposed to be Strieber. That's what you'd get when you use voice, right? But it's about Strieber's visitors, the entire uh, beings abducting countless thousands of people or nothing more than good old-fashioned demons doing what they do best, stealing souls. There's Strieber's book. You know what is wild? I remember my mom having this book back in the 80s. I remember it because the cover absolutely creeped me out. And especially when it said, a true story. I was like, and you know, I was a teenager. I was like, what is that? What kind of, what kind of, I don't even thought it. What kind of demonic stuff is my mom reading? I'll give you this. She was reading it about the time she got cancer too. But that's another thing. We're going to talk about uh, actually encounters with UFOs. And getting into some of this literature and some of this stuff will open you up to demonic possession yourself. But uh, this is interesting. Willie Strieber, whose three bestsellers, Communion, Transformation, and Breakthrough, are the account of his ongoing abduction, gives descriptions of his UFO visitors that are revealing. Now, listen, this is his description. This is a UFO alien believer saying he has been abducted and he's been all kinds of things happen. Listen to what he says about them. He says, I became entirely given over to extreme dread. The fear was so powerful that it seemed to make my personality evaporate. Whitley ceased to exist. What was left was a body and a state of raw fear so great that it swept about me like a thick suffocating curtain, turning paralysis into a condition that seemed close to death. All of these cases, these people who talk about alien abductions have that sleep paralysis thing. Isn't it interesting that for us Christians, when we rebuke them and command them to go in the name of Jesus, that that goes away. And anybody that goes through deliverance from the demon spirits, the open strongholds they have in their life, it happens no more. I have not had it happen again since my deliverance. But he says the paralysis that they cause turns into a condition seen close to death. I died and a wild animal appeared in my place. I felt an in indescribable sense of menace. Whatever, he says, whatever was there seemed so monstrously ugly, so filthy and dark and sinister. Of course they were demons. They had to be. These are his words. And they were here, and I couldn't get away. The visitors were so terrible, so ugly, so fierce, and I was so small and helpless, and I could smell that odor of theirs like greasy smoke hanging in my nostrils. So that's from Communion, the book. Um, shouldn't that be a hint that maybe I need to find somebody that knows Jesus to help me with these demons? But no, what did he do? He doubled down and kept on going with them. And there's more quotes of him talking about how now he believes they're good. This is what happens when you reject the God, the true God of the Bible, of creation. You reject the scriptures. You reject Jesus Christ. This is what happens. You will embrace this kind of evil and ugly and somehow turn it into something good. Here's another one, John Keel. UFOs, 
Operation Trojan Horse book. He said, the endless messages from the space people would now fill a library while uh, the communicators claim to represent some other world. The contents of those messages are identical to the messages long received by mediums and mystics, basically with witches and fortune tellers. Now, we'll get more into that next week. I got some quotes that you're going to blow your mind on some of this stuff. Well, there we go. I, of course, one of my favorites here. This is in my book as well. But Aleister Crowley saw this spirit, and it interesting? The similars to the, this is long before all this became a thing. And he said, today they call them angels and demons. Tomorrow they will call them something else. Well, what are they calling them? Aliens, extraterrestrials, non-human entities and intelligences. No, they are still angels and demons, as it always has been. And again, their whole goal, their whole purpose, their whole work is to tear people away from believing the Bible and following Jesus Christ as their Savior and their God. Here we go. This is a more very recent, August 9th, 2023, just a week ago or so, not just a few days ago, really. King Charles, who's probably, I'm leaning toward him possibly being the Antichrist now. We'll deal with that later. He very well could be. He actually fits all the criteria we'll see we'll find out but he's called on to release the truth on ufos to prepare religious the religious people for impact of et life hmm i wonder how he's going to do that they say well he's now the head of the church of england so blah, 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 whatever king charles can stick his environmental nonsense and his alien nonsense right where it's supposed to go right now, this book is not a Christian book whatsoever, but this book is, a, I talked about this in, uh, at Skyfall 2019. I'm still going through it, and I'm really being amazed, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get more into it next week because there's some important information in that book. The connection between NASA and the Vatican is unreal, and they're setting it all up. And this book, um, she states, when they went to visit, she had a guy named... Uh, she kept their identities hidden, but a NASA employee and um, another, guy, another popular scientist, they went to the crash site, of the alleged crash site of the UFO in 1947. Uh, of course, Tyler, the guy from NASA, blindfolded them. Uh, they couldn't see exactly where it was. Got there, though, and said that, they, that this, one of them recognized this hill and said that was in, a, in an X-Files show. So say, said somebody on the X-Files actually had to know what was going on and had to be allowed to go there. But here's what's interesting. She said, I'm standing, when she was at the crash site of the UFO, she said, I'm standing on ground zero of the new religion. Her whole book is about UFOs, religion, and technology, that it is the new religion. And boy, is it going to ever be when they come out of full hiding. Now, here's some that I've shared about in the past. Father Giuseppe Tanzelaniti, Vatican professor, Vatican University. Here's what he said, because this is the whole purpose of this. Here's where they're taking us. Very soon, we will, have, we will not have to deny our Christian faith. But there is information coming from another world, and once it is confirmed, it's going to require a rereading of the gospel as we know it. Do you understand? This is what this is about. They want to change things. What they're going to say is, we came up with all this just to try to keep you people in morality. But really, we did it. Jesus was one of us. That's one other thing they're going to say. But this is, I mean, I'm sorry, you don't get to be a, a professor at Vatican University unless you are in the know. Let's just put it that way. Oh, is he? He's a demonologist. As Chad said, he's a demonologist. I don't doubt it. It's interesting. This guy. Now, this guy I quote extensively in the first two chapters there, somewhere in chapter one or two of my book. Like clay under the seal. Jesuit, MIT grad, Harvard professor, signed to the Vatican Observatory. He's everywhere. 
He'll be at the White House one day. He'll be somewhere else the next day. Uh, but this is what gets me. He says, very soon the nations will look to aliens for their salvation. Not to Jesus. Now, this is your Jesuit priest. You know, the Jesuit priests are sworn under oath to destroy the faith of Protestant Christianity. That would be about creation. That would be about Jesus being the only way to salvation. The Jesuits are not your friends. And for the first time in Catholic history, we have a Jesuit pope. Actually, two of them. The one you see on the outside and then the black pope that's hidden within. Father Malachi Martin here. Uh, again, he acts like he's a little whistleblower within the Catholic Church because his friend, what was it, uh, Pope John Paul, what was he, the first, am I getting it mixed up, who only lived for a month before Pope John Paul II, they killed him, and he says they killed him. And there's reasons behind that. But this is a quote from him. The highest levels of the Vatican governance know what is approaching the earth and it will be of utmost importance in the coming years. Approaching earth. Huh? Now, when you know the truth that there's a firmament and there's no distant galaxies and there's no planets far, far away and there's none of this nonsense that they have come up with, you now know that the Vatican is in on this deception, right along with NASA, right along with the United States government, right along with the Russian government, right along with the European governments. You see, it says in Psalm 2, matter of fact, let's, let's go back. Let's put up Psalm 2 real quick. I can't believe I got through 75 slides in just over an hour. 75 slides. That's why, I, and I had to, I had to stop because I'll have just as many next week. No, we, here's, here's what I want to, um, Psalm 2, we want to put up Psalm 2. Let's read this together for a minute here. So this is prophecy from King David by the Holy Spirit about the last days. We're going to read most of it. It says, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? See, most of this stuff, folks, it's just in your imagination. You ain't been to Mars. You hadn't been in a rocket ship. Are there people that say they've seen the curvature of the earth at 30,000 feet? I've been there many times. No, you haven't. It's and in your imagination because you've been seeing pictures of it so much. I had, a, I had a person come on my Facebook page once and said, oh, I flew in the Concorde and I saw the curvature of the earth. I went and looked up dozens of of people videoing out the window of the Concord at 59,000 feet, and it was flat. The horizon was flat. There was no curve. It's in people's mind. I'm telling you, the brainwashing, the indoctrination, the programming is strong in people's mind. And that's what they imagine vain and empty things. Hey, let me just go on and tell you right now, folks. You either follow the Bible of the Lord Jesus Christ, of the God of creation, or you follow the Bible of the media and the world system. You can't follow both. you got to choose one or the other. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine these vain things? Why? Because the kings of the earth have set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and against his anointed one, the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. They are specifically in agreement together to be against the Lord. Well, if the Lord says creation is this way, and the world comes along and says, no, it's this other way, they are against him. It's, this is what it boils down to. These Luciferian Satanists that run the governments of the world, they hate God Almighty. They hate our Lord Jesus Christ. They hate the Bible. They hate the truth. They want their own kingdom. They want their own way. They don't want to have any authority over them. They don't want to have any consequences for their wickedness. They don't want to have consequences for, for molesting little kids. 
That's how wicked and evil they are. But these kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. What are cords and bands? Those are restraints. Moral restraint. The moral restraint of the Bible. We want this. We don't want. We don't even want to hear it. We don't want to hear thou shalt not commit adultery. We don't want to hear incest is evil. We don't want to hear it. Homosexuality is sin and abomination. We don't want to hear mutilating little children for transgenderism. We don't want to hear that's evil, that's wicked. We don't want to hear it. Cast away their cords and their bands. We want no restraints, no moral accountability. This is what they are saying, this world system. They continue. But it says, he that sitteth in the heavens, the Lord, shall have them in derision. What is derision? That means God is looking at them and laughing at them in a mocking way. He's like, you bunch of little ants who think you are going to get away with all this. Not going to happen. I mean, it really, it looked like, it looked like if you could take a little telescope down to a little ant and he's got his fist up ready to fight you. You're like, have you lost your mind? All I have to do is step on you, and it's over. And that's what he's, he's laughing at them. And he goes on. Then he laughs for a little while. Then he shall speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure he will come and begin actually he's going to begin to judge them before he even returns and then he's going to return Jesus is going to return and he ain't coming as a baby in a manger this time he is coming to bring judgment and justice and it says he's going to vex them in his sore displeasure all of their embracing of horrible immorality and wickedness so he's not just going to laugh at them in derision he's finally going to come and speak to them and then he's going to vex them let's keep going yet have i set my king upon my holy hill of zion that is jesus so this is a this is a prophecy of jesus here before he even came i will declare the decree the lord has said unto me thou art my son this day have i begotten thee We know who that is. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. This is exactly what it says about Jesus when he returns. He is going to break them down. All the cities of the nations will crumble. Every mountain will be brought down. Every island will be moved out of its place. God is coming back here in fierce wrath for all of this evil, all these lies, all this wickedness, all this sin. People say, why does God allow, why does God allow evil? Because he's patient. But his patience will soon run out, and he will be back here to put a stop to it. And it, you are either going to be on the side of Jesus' righteousness, or you're going to be on the side of the devil wickedness. And if you're on the devil's side, you will be destroyed. And then put in hell. God is also, he's our father, but he is going to be the final judge of mankind's wickedness as well. And there is punishment, eternal punishment, for evil. Your only hope is to confess your evil, your wickedness, your sin, fall down on your knees and cry out in mercy and say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Jesus, I know you died for me. I want your blood to wash my sins away. Have mercy on me, forgive me, and let me come into your kingdom. I don't want to go into the devil's hell. I don't want to go with the devil's kingdom. Let's keep reading. Be wise, therefore, O ye kings. Notice who he's talking to. The rulers of the earth, the kings, the leaders, the politicians. Be wise, kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. I love this one. Kiss the son lest he be angry 
And you perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Kiss the son. Serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Don't be proud. Don't be stubborn. Don't be rebellious. Humble yourself. Fear the Lord. That means to respect him that he is not only God, but he is going to be judge and jury and executioner. And your sins and your wickedness are crimes against all eternity, against heaven, against him. And he looks at them as crimes. And crimes will be punished. Thank God there is a way. He made a way. One way. Not choose your own way. Not choose your religion. There is one way to find mercy, to find forgiveness, to find everlasting life, to have your sins washed away and forgiven. You must believe in Jesus Christ that he died on that cross for your sins and rose from the dead, and then you must ask him to forgive you, and then you must say, I repent, meaning I turn away from my wicked lifestyle, and I'm going to follow you, Jesus. I'm going to be a disciple. I'm going to walk with you in truth and in righteousness and obedience. There's a lot of people that name the name of Jesus, but they never depart from their sin. They will not be saved. They will not be in heaven. I love it. 3,000 years ago, the warning of how the kings would be, the leaders, the governments of the last days, against the Lord. And this whole alien lie, this whole big bang Heliocentric, Copernican, universe, lie. All of this is together. It's lies. It's always been lies. You know, for the longest time, NASA was given a budget by these kings of $52 million a day. I heard it's gone up. But at 50, think about this. If $52 million a day, they have managed to deceive mankind, to build rockets, to have bad CGI, bad Photoshop, and convince hundreds of millions of people that, no, your Bible's not true. What we say is true. Because they can get in a rocket and fly up in the sky. Always in a curve. Because if you go too high, doink. You know the old saying, the sky's the limit. That's right, it is. Because the firmament is it. Why do you think Hillary kept talking about breaking the glass ceiling? They hate that. Because that makes them know they can't go anywhere beyond. In fact, Paul said it in Acts 17. He said, man's boundaries, limitation has been set. He can only go so far. There ain't none of this going to Mars. God, God tore down... The Tower of Babel, because they said, we're going to build a, 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 a tower that reaches up to heaven. And the Lord said, no, you're not. Divide their languages. It all ended. Now, you think God would stop the Tower of Babel, go all that trouble, and he's going to let them send a, send a satellite way, way out, millions of miles away. It's funny, though. What's funny is they claim to have these satellites all these millions of miles away, and yet we get composite <laughs> images of Earth, not even pictures. Not even pictures. we got one picture where the, the whole United States takes up the top curve. The whole thing. I'm like, man, how big the United States has been growing. <laughs> I just posted about it. I'm driving some people crazy. I mean, I've, I've had one liberal nut just having a, having a full meltdown. But God, I'm going to tell you right now, folks, God's word's true. From Genesis to Revelation, everything he said in here is true. And you can believe God. And, and the Lord will let you, allow you to prove it, to test all things. We can test it. And let me tell you what true science is. True science is something that you can test, observe. means you see it with your eyes. And then you see the results of the test with your eyes. And then you can repeat that test and see the same result. That's science. 
Not artist renditions of things that don't exist. So which religion do you have? Somebody tell me. All right. Are y'all going to fall for this alien nonsense? All right, let's stand. Hallelujah. I love telling the truth. See, this one's going to make Alex Jones and Joe Rogan have a meltdown. Because we're just going to keep cutting through the crap here. In fact, I'm going to tell you right now, God's going to take this message to the whole world. This, this, this sermon today and next week, I'll tell you, it's, he's already told me it's going to the whole world. Because he's going to give them the truth. He's going to have people give them the truth. Let's do that song. That song by Lindo. Uh, glory, glory. Let's do that one. How about that? Oldie. I want to do an oldie. That's right. Because you know what? When you stand up for the truth, you're going to lose some friends. How many lost some friends? All right. When you stand up for God's truth, have you, you lost some family members to turn on you too. Yeah, there we go. Well, you know what? Let me tell you right now. He's the pearl of great price, folks. He's worth whatever you have to go through, whatever you lose, even if you lose your life for his sake. I, here's the thing I'm going to tell you right now. Even if you lose your life for his sake, he's going to outgive you back for all eternity. He says, the things have not entered into man's heart or mind, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And folks, we're only here on this earth. Even if you live 80 plus years, it's a blip of time in the scope of eternity. Don't miss the Jesus train, because the other train's going the other direction. Jesus train going up, and there's a train going down. Which train are you on? Let's sing this song. Let's sing this song. Come on. Give me praise this morning. We worship you, Lord. We're going to lay down the burden of sin. Lay down the burden of all these lies and false religion and deceivers and devils and demons and Evil, Lord. We're going to lay it all down. Push it aside. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord. You've given us power to become the sons and daughters of God. Through the blood you shed on the cross. The atoning, sacrificial blood. The sinless blood. The only blood that can wash our sins away. Clean our hearts. Clean our spirit, soul, and body. Clean our minds. Lord, we are grateful for salvation through the blood of the Lamb. And we're thankful, Lord, that you rose from the dead and have the keys of hell and death. We are thankful that you are the one true God. And there is power. And if any of these things, these entities, these demons, these fallen angels, Satan himself, if they come against us, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we can bind them, rebuke them, and resist them, and cause them to flee. Lord, because you've given us the authority. And we thank you for your word that is truth. Lord, you revealed about these flying scrolls 25, 2,600 years ago. We know the truth, Lord. If we stick with your word, we will not be deceived by the demons, the fallen angels, or these evil men and women, these Satanists, these Luciferians that control our governments and space programs. We will not be deceived by them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Isn't it good to know that you don't have to be deceived? I mean, I just think God did not leave us without a light. He, he left the light, the lamp of his holy word, and he sent the light and power of his Holy Spirit to live and dwell in us. And we don't have to be deceived. It's when we stray from the word of God, the truth of the word of God, that we're going to be deceived. Or when you want to love wickedness, you love lust and the pleasures of this world, you want to love that more than you love God and live in holy, you will be deceived. Remember it says in James, be doers of the word and not hearers only, 
Deceiving your own self. Say, I can deceive myself. Don't help the devil. Can somebody say, I won't help the devil. <laughs> Amen. All right. Well, we are done for the day. You all know the rule around here. You got to hug some necks before you leave. We'll say goodbye to Soren in Denmark and Danny in L.A. And goodness, we got them all over the place. Bless y'all. <laughs>